So in this video, I want to talk about the hydrophobic effect. And the hydrophobic effect is when we have these two nonpolar groups and they form this kind of bond where they get nearby each other and they form this nonpolar nonpolar bond. However, it's important to note that technically this isn't a bond. That's not the proper word. But what's going on when we have these two nonpolar groups? Why do we go through this phenomenon of the hydrophobic effect where they where they get nearby each other forming this pseudo bond? What's what's going on? So let's say we have these two phenylalanines, where these are the phenyl R groups, and then these, this is the rest of the amino acids. So, so we know these phenyl groups are very hydrophobic. We know they're very nonpolar, and they're very hydrophobic, and they, they don't have a lot of charge. However, so let's say we're in this aqueous solution with these water molecules. These water molecules, we know these water molecules are going to have to interact with this, with these, this nonpolar uh, phenylalanine group. So we know these water molecules are going to have to interact because, again, they're going to be exposed to this nonpolar phenylalanine group. But something important to note is this water and this nonpolar phenyl group can't really form any enthalpically favorable bonds. So essentially what happens is now this water is forced to have to get in a very organized manner, in a very orderly organized manner, so then they can essentially form enthalpically favorable hydrogen bonds with each other. So the point is, whenever we have water interacting with this nonpolar group, this water has to rearrange itself. These water molecules have to rearrange themselves in order to form enthalpically favorable hydrogen bonds. So therefore, all these water molecules that are interacting with this hydrophobic group are very orderly. They're, they're in a very orderly, organized manner because, again, whenever they're having this interaction with this nonpolar group, they have to get in a very orderly way so they can form those enthalpically favorable hydrogen bonds. However, now we know we have all these ordered water molecules. And we know order is entropically unfavorable. We know this is entropically unfavorable. This is entropically unfavorable because we have all this ordered water molecule. And we know if we have ordered water molecules, that's entropically unfavorable. So therefore, we know we have this low entropy. And again, I know it gets confusing with low and high entropy. But again, the point is, is this these water molecules interacting with this nonpolar region are very have to get in a very orderly way. And therefore, these water molecules are very entropically unfavorable. And the exact same thing is going on with this phenyl group. We have these interactions between these water molecules and these phenyl groups. So again, that, that, that's, very enthalpically un, uh, that's very entropically unfavorable because we have all these water molecules that, that have to arrange themselves in a very precise way. So we have all these very ordered water molecules, so, and that's very entropically unfavorable. So therefore, when we have these two nonpolar groups separated, that's, that's entropically unfavorable because look at all this, these water molecules that, that have to be ordered and therefore very orderly, and therefore this is entropically unfavorable. However, what happens once we go through this hydrophobic effect where now they're nearby each other? Well, notice now there's less water hydrophobic interactions. So therefore, there's less water that's super orderly. So therefore, that there's less water that's very entropically unfavorable in the ordered fashion. So therefore, this is entropically favorable. The entropy of the system has increased. Because again, it's increased because again, before we had all these interactions with these water molecules and these very orderly water molecules. So those entropically unfavorable because we had all that ordered water, all, the, all these ordered water molecules. However, once we go through the hydrophobic effect, now we have less ordered water molecules. So that's that's entropically favorable. Because again, notice, for example, focusing on this one, we have all the water on this side of the phenyl group, and we have all the water on this opposite side of the phenyl group. And then we have water on this side of the phenyl group, and we have water on this opposite side of the phenyl group. So therefore, so we, you can think of it as we have these four water hydrophobic interfaces on this side, on this side, and then on this side, and then on this side. So we have these four water hydrophobic interfaces with all this orderly, low, entropically unfavorable water. However, now when we go through the hydrophobic effect, we only have two. We only have two of those interfaces. So therefore, we have less water that's super orderly, so that's entropically favorable. So that's what the hydrophobic effect is. The, the key point is you want to minimize that surface area between this, this water and this nonpolar region. You want to minimize that surface area. So how do you minimize that surface area? You, you let them bond. You, you, you let them get nearby each other. You let these nonpolar regions get nearby each other. So now there's some of that surface area that's being accounted for. So all the surface area that would normally have to have very highly ordered water molecules is now taken care of.
So now, essentially, because again, water hydrophobic interaction is entropically unfavorable, so now we have less of that entropically unfavorable interactions. So now this is entropically favorable, so so that's and so that's spont that helps create spontaneous reactions. So so that's why we see the hydrophobic effect. And don't. Uh, underestimate this effect. This can be a very powerful effect and can be seen all over in, in biochemistry.